Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the new FR Sky X Lite Pro. This is an update to the popular X Lite original which I have got here. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding FR Sky at the moment because they have supposedly been sending out letters to dealers saying that if you are listing any of the jumper transmitters with OpenTX then it's either them or us. Now the issue that I have with these letters is that people are making videos about it and there are posts online. The problem is there is no evidence of the source of the letter. Now, if a company came out and said, this is the complete email that I received, here is the email address with frsky.com or whatever as the email, then you could say, yeah, that's legit and I'm completely against that. But we don't have that. We just have a letter that doesn't say where the source is from so I can't really take anything away from that but if it is true then I'm completely against it because it's open source and I don't think Jumper are doing anything wrong now I know a lot of people will see these videos that have been made about these letters and say oh man I just wouldn't touch an FR Sky product ever again just because of their practice well Fair enough, but for me, I don't really care about that stuff. And, you know, I don't like TBS business practice, but the Crossfire is one of the best products on the market, so I bought one, and I don't have a problem with it. I just don't like their business model, and that's it. Anyways... Onto the X Lite Pro. There's actually two models, so we've got the Pro and the S, and there are some differences. But before you go and press the Buy It Now button, if you are a big fan of this guy, I'm going to put a disclaimer here straight away because the new X Lite Pro, even though looks the same, actually has a completely different protocol and at the making of this video it is not compatible with D16 receivers or D8 receivers. So both of these new radios are using FR Sky's new access protocol which I'll talk about later but first of all let's see what we get in the package. So the first thing that I'm seeing are these adapters. What does it say on here? Free gift! free gift at 160 quid I don't think they are free but these are 18650 adapters because you might remember that when the original X Lite was released people were disappointed that a funny Lion battery size was used so 18500s and you had to go out of your way to get these so ironically, if you are upgrading from the old version to the new version, you probably have a load of these batteries. So these batteries will still fit the new version, but they are giving you for free these adapters and we'll take a closer look at those later. So if we just lift this up, comes in a nice shiny bag. But if you notice, I can just see, if I lift the transmitter up, we've actually got some space down here for the transmitter to fit in here with these longer adapters for the 18650 batteries. So we'll have to check that out. But it comes in this plastic bag here, so I'll just take it out. So, ergonomically, they look very similar, don't they? We've got these gimbal protection covers there for storage, but they are very loose, so if you tip the thing upside down, they'll just fall off, so be careful with that. But, yeah, as you can see, 
they look very similar apart from the colour of course and you can see we've got the 18500 caps installed out of the box so what has changed well this is the pro version so the gimbals are whole gimbals but they are also aluminium or aluminium CNC'd whereas these are plastic the sticks are slightly different, they're a little bit more aggressive actually, so they would stick into your thumb a little bit more than these ones. So if we just look underneath here, we're not given a micro SD card, so we're going to have to supply our own. Then we've got the S port here and we've got the USB port only this time there is a charging circuit built into it so that you don't have to have a separate charger for your 18650s or 18500s also this is a trainer port and an audio jack this time you can select it whereas on this one I believe it's just an audio jack also on the top we have got two extra buttons they are momentary buttons and it's also got a built-in motion gyro so you can actually fly your model tilting it like this and this is a shout out to my friend Chris because he said one day that's how we're going to be flying models is by tilting them just like you do a Wii controller well you can do that but you can also set it up as a switch other than that the switches are slightly longer but they're still quite short so if we take a look at the original yeah these back ones especially are very short so they have lengthened them a little bit and this one has got the wireless Bluetooth in there so you can do wireless training now I think when this one initially came out they said that it could do that but then it turned out it actually couldn't this one you can do that and you can use it with their app they've got an Android app that works with a specific receiver that's also a flight controller for a plane we've also got a built-in spectrum analyzer and power meter but more on that later as well so let's see what else you get in the package so we've got the manual and looks like the manuals quite extensive actually I've already had a look at it online and it does actually tell you the differences here between the X Lite S and also the Pro version so we can see here that the non Pro version doesn't have the whole gimbals it says but it's pretty much got everything else other than the power meter function and also an accurate SWR indicator it says there but you can see the original X lights got loads of X's by the new things so I'm just seeing if there's anything that I've missed but no it looks like I've covered everything there so it says upgraded RF module with the installed access protocol now you're probably wondering if you've got a bunch of D16 receivers then should I buy this product if I'm into the X Lite well this is a very early version as I mentioned so I can confirm a couple of things D16 is going to be supported it's first of all going to be supported via the receiver so if we actually take a look at the manual it actually lists the current receivers that are supported they are calling it ISRM and these are the receivers that currently work and we also now have the RXSR as well which isn't listed there and then it says 
second phase we've got X so the X series R9 S and XM series receivers second phase so it looks like they are going to update the firmware of the receiver first what I can confirm is that all of the FR Sky transmitters are going to have eventually this access protocol and there's a reason for that it's because it is superior it does over the air updates it does automatic binding and it's got more channels and a lower latency the problem is I'm not sure about D8 you see whether you've got an EU transmitter or you've got the international version D8 will let you bind to both in fact I think at the making of this video this is only available in the international version so this came from Banggood and this is the box that it comes in it says non LBT but we do have an LBT option but if you look at the firmware currently on the website then it only supports the international version and of course that is going to change like I say this is an early version now I've actually just received some more information regarding what the internal module of the x -Lite Pro is capable of supporting so FR Sky has put on their website a chart showing that the internal module of the x -Lite Pro can support the access protocol and also D16 even though it's not enabled at the moment but if you look where it says D8 then it is not supported so if you want to use D8 with this transmitter then they are mentioning an XJT Lite module and you will have to use that if you want to use D8 mode anyways those are the differences let's see what else we get in the package so we have got a bunch of FR Sky stickers if you are into that and then we've got a little packet here with some stuff in so let's check out what we've got so we have got a mini screwdriver but it's a flathead screwdriver then we have got some heat shrink and that is to go over the top of the switches and the first version had that and then we have got all of these plugs for the back which I did away with on the original because they just fell out and to give an update on the original actually it does wear here specifically can you see it gets quite a lot of marks there so I wonder if it's the same material yeah it's the same material and yeah this doesn't get used that much either so I imagine people who use these a lot have got a lot of wear around this area here but also in here we have got a hex screw which is definitely different to the original so just like the original it comes modeless although I should say in the setup I believe the original came set up as mode 1 so I'll have to see if that's the case with this because we know that mode 2 is more popular and I found that really interesting that it came set up as mode one in the settings so we'll have to check that out but of course in order to change the mode then we have this new hex screw you see the originals they are a Phillips style screw and this time we have got all hex screws and they are by the looks of it a two millimeter I'll just have to check that yeah so two millimeter for the screw and interestingly looks like that it's set up for mode one because otherwise this screw would be in there so this is the tension screw for the stick 
and then this one here is to make it loose. So I'm going to have to be very careful here. And what we do is we put that screw in there and then tighten it up, make sure that I'm not cross-threading anything. So yeah, there it goes. So I'm just going to just keep on screwing it in until we reach the bottom because that should release the spring tension for my throttle. You'd be doing it on the other side obviously if you are mode 2. That just keeps spinning but as you can see it has released the spring. Okay. I think that seems about right and then on this side we screw this in and then that's going to provide a slight tension on the stick. Just like the original you kind of have to play around with it a bit until you've got it how you like it so I'm just going to spend a bit of time doing that. Okay so I've spent a bit of time getting the tension right on the throttle and I have to say I really do like the blue colour although it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet I'm not sure if that is going to show up on the camera it's the same soft touch material as the black but the black doesn't seem to get as many fingerprints on it as this one for some reason and people say that I'm really picky so you're really not gonna like this bit these end caps aren't quite the same color as the rest of the transmitter anyways let's get a battery in it and power it up I'm first of all gonna start with the 18500s now you'll notice that these are quite loose when they don't have a battery in them and I'm going to be using these batteries that don't have the little bit on the top there because I don't think that they fit if you have those types of batteries so let's see how much of a squeeze it is with these batteries in so yeah you have to put a bit of force into it there we go that's that one and then I'll do the other one so it's positive at the top and negative at the bottom. Uh, there we go. There we go. It's gone on. Right, the moment of truth. Is it set up as mode 1 or mode 2? So long press the button. Throttle warning. But that's just because I didn't have it at the bottom and that's gone away. Switch warning. So I must have hit one of the switches. Alright, set up as mode 1. In fact, I should be able to confirm that if I remember. It's a long press there. And then we've got the radio set up here. So if I go to the bottom, yeah. So it comes as mode 1 out of the box. So that's probably the first thing that you're going to have to change. So this video isn't going to be in how to on OpenTX but I will go down the options that have changed so everything's looking the same here so far but yes so there you go gyro is the first option that we come to so it's got a max degrees and actually you can see it changing when I move it so that's the first change and if we keep coming down here all of this looks very similar. So, got splash screen, owner ID. I think that might be different because of their access protocol. So, down here somewhere, so USB mode. So, it, it says ask, but if we go into it by pressing the button, then we can have it as a joystick or SD card mode. I'm going to keep it as ask but then we've got jack mode and again it's on as ask when you plug something in but we can do audio or trainer so that is the new thing there. 
and I think that's it for the radio setup. Let's go along here. So I don't have an SD card in there, but you can actually download SD card contents from the FR Sky website. So you might want to do that. Now tools. This is something different. So we have got a spectrum analyzer with the idea being that you can check the amount of noise that is in your area. So the default frequency is 2440. So looks like we can change that. Let's see what it goes down to. So 2.4 and then what is the end frequency? 2.85 but I'm going to keep it at stock at 2440 just gone past it a little bit there and then we've got the span as well so default is 40 megahertz let's see what it goes up to so just 80 megahertz there you can see it hopping around here but I've got Wi-Fi and all sorts so it's probably that which is making that noise but if I go back down to the stock span which is 40 what I should be able to do is turn on my Tyrannus or should I say X9D and I think already actually it's it's picking up more noise. If I take that away, yep, so it's behind my back now and then bring it closer. You can see the noise that is being produced by this transmitter. So if I turn it off straight away the noise level goes down. And I think the S version has got that as well. But it doesn't have, so it says stop in there, it doesn't have a power meter. So the power meter is interesting and really it's only for the Sirius RF guys. It does something similar to the Immersion RC power meter except it only does it in 2.4 gigahertz and if I read the manual correct yeah 900 and basically it is to check the power output of another device now according to the manual you can't really use it without an attenuator because somewhere in the manual it states it says that uh, without an attenuator, minus 50 dBm, so dBm is dB in reference to a milliwatt, and it says to minus 10 dBm, which is a very small input. And then it says with an added 40 dB attenuator, it says from minus 10 dBm to 30 dBm. Now, if you aren't an RF guy then I think if I'm not mistaken 30 dBm is a watt so yeah basically you can't use this function unless you buy their separate attenuator which will plug into there and then I'd imagine you would need to use the external antenna because it comes out of the box with the internal antenna turned on so that is that page and oh, everything has disappeared and I can't seem to move anything. Have I found a bug, FR Sky? Why happens if I press on it? Nothing's happening. Up, down, left, right, it just says tools. If I hold it, nothing, nothing. I'm gonna have to cancel it. Will that work? Or is it completely locked up? Oh, well, there you go. It's like a bit of a bug there. If that does that every time. So let's come out of that stopping. Ah, it's not done it that time. That's interesting. So I would say a bit of a 
bug there. So we've got global functions there, and we've got the trainer options, nothing new there, and then hardware, and then version. So nothing different there except the version 2.3, of course. So the stick calibration is under hardware. I think it was separate in 2.2. So what's all this access protocol business about? Well, let's go into the model and check it out. So we don't have anything different here. Let's go to the bottom. So here we go. So if we go to the internal RF, we've got ISRM. And if I press it and move to the side, I can only turn it off. No D16, no D8. So, yeah, at the moment, that's all it's compatible with. Channel wise, however, will go up to 24. And, oh, that's interesting actually. It goes up in increments, so you can't say do 10, 11, 12 by the looks of it. It's either 24, 16, or 8, and that is it. So if I just cancel that, and we have got RX number, which you can change, fail safe, so I like to have that on no pulses. So this is where it gets interesting. So if you want to bind to a receiver, you can do it the old fashioned way. So press the button on the receiver and then plug your battery in. Or if it's a USB one, then you can go into here and it says waiting and it will recognize the receiver and then you will bind to it. But then we have got options in here and that is to change to external antenna but I'm not going to do that of course because I don't have an antenna on there but that's how you would do that and then if we come down here we have got receiver 1, receiver 2 and receiver 3 and if we press bind here then this is where it would just automatically bind if your receiver has the right firmware on it and it will register and you'll notice that you can bind three. And I like this personally because I fly mode one, right? And I've got a lot of people that I would like to say, yeah, have a go of my model. That doesn't tend to happen in the FPV community, but in the plane community, we used to call it past the transmitter and everybody would have a go. So if eventually this access protocol becomes the standard, if FR Sky can survive all of this controversy, then you can have three different transmitters all bound to the same model. And the reason that they say that they've done that is if you're an avid racer and something happens to your transmitter and you've got a spare one, then you don't have to mess around rebinding. But who's ever had a transmitter fail on them? I certainly haven't. For me, this is all going to be about sharing with other people so that they can have a go of my model. Oh, I should mention as well, external RF not working at the making of this video. Again, we are in a situation where they've got the hardware working, but not the software. So yeah, that's not working at the moment. But if I press it, let's see what we've got. So uh, we've got PPM and ISRM, which is weird because it's got an internal one. DSM2, we've got R9MA, R9MLA, S bus and that's it so no multi 
or anything like that yet. So let's just exit out of there. So trainer mode this time we have got master and Bluetooth and then master CPPM, master S bus, then slave jack, master jack. So that is how you use the trainer. So if you want to do it wirelessly, apparently they have reduced the latency as well. It's interesting though, the Bluetooth option has disappeared, hasn't it? It said Bluetooth at one point, but now that's disappeared. Ah, I think I figured it out. So in the radio settings under hardware, if we go all the way to the bottom, we've got Bluetooth and it's actually turned off so we can have telemetry and we can have trainer. So if I select trainer and then exit out of everything there and then page across go into the model go down to the trainer mode there we go we got bluetooth so that's why one thing that i am going to try are the 18650 caps so to turn it off it's a long press by the way when it's charging this goes green and then when it's finished charging then it goes out and it does balance charge the batteries so I'm going to get my free 18650 end caps come on free really okay so I need to make sure that I have got the right ones otherwise they ain't gonna fit so that's gonna be for that one and that's going to be for that one Okay, so I'm just going to remove the 18500 batteries, bit of a shake. Now, I don't think the 18650 batteries with this little extension here on the plus part is going to fit, but we'll give it a try. So, where does it line up? It lines up there. And, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm putting so much pressure on there, but... Oh, is it going to fit? I don't think so. I'm worried I'm going to damage the plastic. Wow, really have to push on there. No, that's not going to fit. All right, let's try one of these unbranded ones that have got a flat top. And let's try again. So, oh, that's a tight fit as well, but nah, well, there you go. Confirmed. So, once again, if you have got the 18650 batteries with this on the top, then it's not going to fit. Don't get these though, absolutely rubbish. So, let's try this one. I always struggle to get them lined up. Ah, that one went on easier. And then let's power it up. And there we go. I have to say though again, being picky, colour slightly different. <laughs> so for me, this access protocol is a step in the right direction for FR Sky and I believe they're going to be adding it to the R9 system eventually because I just despise the way that you have to bind FR Sky receivers by holding down the bind button and then trying to plug in your battery and it can go wrong you can get loads of sparks you can even get a voltage spike and ruin your entire system and if you are lucky and the receiver powers up from the USB then that's a little bit easier and I also despise having to use my test clamps and then connect the servo wire or individual servo wires to the S port to update and flash the latest version of the firmware to the receiver 
The problem is though, at the making of this video, it's only this transmitter and the S version that support the access protocol and there's only a handful of receivers as I mentioned earlier so if you have got an XM Plus at the making of the video then you won't be able to fly. Now I've got an RX SR here and they have just released the firmware for it so luckily I'm going to be able to check it out the problem is though all of these benefits that the access protocol has for example over the air updates of flashing your receiver won't work because the receivers are shipping with the old firmware so I'm still going to have to manually upgrade the firmware before I can use the over the air system now luckily with my 100 GBP build I connected the S port up to the RXSR and I'm lucky as well because with the Mamba stack the receiver doesn't power up when you plug in the USB port. So that means that I can actually update the firmware of this receiver through the computer. So let me go and show you how I can do that. But I must reiterate that this is only going to work if your receiver is not powered up when the USB is plugged into the computer. Okay, so here we are on the FR Sky website, which is www.frsky-rc.com. And look at this, they are advertising their new Tyrannus X9 Lite on their main page. It's almost like they're trying to compete with Jumper, isn't it, by offering a budget version of the X9. And it also looks like it's using this access protocol. But anyways, we need to go to the download section and you can see that under transmitters we've got Tyrannus X Lite S and also the Pro and I'll show you because they have released an updated firmware for it about a week ago it says fix the random external antenna warning issue and support GVAR and Halley but I'm just going to be going with the firmware that it came with so I'm gonna go back to download and we need to go to receivers so I'm gonna select RXSR and then we should have the access firmware so I'm going to download it well that downloaded pretty fast so I'm going to use WinRAR to extract it so we've got two files one for S port and one for F port now I don't think that you can do pass through with F port. I think it's just S port and I'm connected up with S port anyway so that's going to be the one that I'm going to use but I'm just going to extract that and then close it and we also need the firmware flasher tool which I already have but if we come down here somewhere so under STK we have got the tool FR Sky update S port so you'd want to download that and extract it then you need to plug your quadcopter into the computer and open up Betaflight and yes I haven't upgraded Betaflight on this model to the latest version so this is the old configurator but I'm going to connect to it and then if we go into the port tab you'll see that my smart port is on the UART6 now coders don't like to follow logic so UART6 in the CLI will actually be 5 and UART3 would be 2 and UART1 would be naught. So if I want to do the pass through I need to go into the CLI and type in a command but I've got it in my clipboard so it's serial pass through 5 and then the board rate and then if I press enter then that will say that I need to power cycle so at this point you close beta flight and then you open up the flashing tool and this is the flashing tool so we then select the COM port and then go into file 
So I'm going to be selecting the S port version and then press open. And then what I need to do is plug the battery in and also make sure as well at this point that you have put your VTX to a low power because this takes quite a while. So I'm going to now plug in a battery and of course make sure you have all the props off before plugging it in and then if it doesn't say this by the way then there's some sort of issue. Remember the receiver cannot be powered up when you open this up at first and select the file but now if I press download then we'll get these flashing lights and it's now flashing the firmware so it takes quite a long time so make sure that your LiPo is fully charged and I will see you in a bit in fact we'll be able to see how long it takes from the clock down here okay that took about 10 minutes so I'm going to press end now and I'm going to unplug the battery and also unplug the USB and let's go and see what this access protocol is capable of. Welcome to OpenTX. So you will notice now that I have got audio and that's because I downloaded the SD card contents so in the download section of the website that you saw for the X Lite Pro there's the SD card content so I've just copied that across and you get audio and files on there and other things like that I've created a simple model so I'll just take you through that so I just called it M2 and then if I go across to the inputs, I've left everything as T-A-E-R here. But then down here, if we go to channel 8, I've actually set up a input ready for RSSI, for the RXSR. Now there are some receivers when you flash this access firmware to them that they output the RSSI on an AUX channel, but the RXSR doesn't. So I've called the input R but we don't have a source yet because I need to bind to the model and then discover sensors otherwise the source will change. We need to make sure that the scale is 100% so I'm going to exit out of there and then I will show you the mixer page so down here on channel 5 I've got it set to ARM what I thought was interesting is that you can see that I have called them certain names, so A for arm, but when I hover over them they disappear, which I thought was quite strange. But I've got channel 5 set up to arm on this two position switch back here, and then I've got my modes on this three position switch, and then for the buzzer I've actually used the momentary switch because I think that would be quite useful. And then if we go down to channel 8, then again this is set up to receive RSSI so source is going to be R and you have to make sure that the weight is 200 and the offset is minus 100 but that is everything that I have set up I haven't got Lua scripts set up or anything like that I haven't looked into it yet so now we can bind to the model so if I start at the bottom and scroll up we want the mode to be ISRM and then the channel range I'm keeping channels 1 to 8 because just like the previous protocol the less channels you have the lower the latency is and I'm not using any more than eight channels so it's pointless to use any more the RX number I have gone with 01 because it says in the manual not to use 00 
the fail safe I have set to no pulses and there's actually a range test option which I don't think I covered earlier and then if I go into receiver 1 and press bind it should start chirping at me so now all I need to do is plug in my battery and already it's recognized it as the RXSR so if I just press enter and it says bind successful I should be able to press my momentary button and that confirms everything's working and I should be able to arm and while I'm here I might as well test the fail safe as well so I need to press enter and that's working as well so I need to turn this back on Welcome to OpenTX So the next thing that I want to do is I want to go and discover the sensors so I think that is on page 11 so that I can add my RSSI so if I do discover new sensors you can see that it's picked that up and we've got the RSSI there I'm not seeing anything new like link quality or anything like that and I've always found with the RXSR on the old D16 firmware that the RSSI wasn't that reliable I mean you know I'm not that far away from the model it's saying 92 dB if I put the model closer then we get closer to 100 but all I need to do is just sort of put it just a little bit away and it goes down to 77 so not sure that the RSSI is going to be trusted but I'll give it a go anyways so what I need to do is stop the discovery and then I need to go back to the top and go back to the inputs page and if I go down to the RSSI you can see that it actually has changed it to current and I want RSSI so if I select that and I should be able to just change it in fact I think if you long press it yeah you can sort of take it to the telemetry part I don't know if that's going to work though let's try telemetry uh, I think it has done that but I don't know how close the RSSI is going to be so let's see if I can find it just gonna keep going there we go RSSI so I'm gonna select that and hopefully that will work and that will feed through to channel 8 and I can set that up in beta flight but as I say I've done that with the previous X Lite and I've not had great results so we'll have to see how that performs. So one thing I mentioned earlier regarding the access protocol is that once you have got it all set up you should be able to update your receiver over the air wirelessly and unfortunately I'm sad to say that I spent a good hour trying to figure out how to do that it doesn't mention it in the instructions however the website suggests that it's done in this page so I'll take you to it so when you have bound your receiver you can actually go into it and we've got some options so there's the share option if you want to bind it to another transmitter whilst being bound to this one and we've got options in here but all we've got there is to disable the telemetry and then the outputs so there's nothing there that will allow me to update the receiver so 
it looks like it's a case of the firmware not being ready but the hardware being ready for it again now there was something that I did find though so if I just press exit out of there and if I go into the radio setup so now I'm using the SD card we have got all of the folders and I thought well maybe you do it this way not rename so it's a short press there so we've got the RXSR access export FRK file that I put onto there and I thought oh well maybe you do it this way but when you press enter there we've got flash S port we have got flash internal module and external module copy rename or delete so nothing there either the only thing that I found that may be some use is if we go into the firmware version if you come down here we've got modules slash rx version and if you go into there it does tell you the version of the firmware that the receiver has and we didn't have that before but if I press any of the buttons then it doesn't do anything so it seems like at the making of this video you cannot do over the air updates to the receiver and it's something that they're probably going to add but I guess that is what you get as an early adopter so without further ado let's get and take this thing for a fly alright let's have a see if I can have a little bit of fun with this guy now I've dialed the rates down because from when I flew with the first X light I found that it was really twitchy. I'm getting a beep from the transmitter. That might be the RSSI. It's looking very low there. Yeah, I always struggle with these short throw transmitters just because I'm so used to the old kind but I do use the x light because it's great for indoors and using with whoops and things I don't think that RSSI value is right I've used the same method of RSSI that I usually use on the RXSR which is on channel 8 but it's reading about 55 all of the time so I don't think that's accurate have to look more into that it was beeping there and I think that is the RSSI warning yeah I really struggle to be smooth on the sticks with this somebody chasing us which is awesome always nice to have <laughs> yeah look at that RSSI going down really low but I still have perfect control so I think it's more to do with the RSSI setup than anything else I really do hope that they make it backwards compatible and again it's beeping that's definitely like the RSSI warning yeah a lot of people say how do you manage to fly and not have loads of dogs around usually I have to wait for at least half an hour or 20 minutes and then you can never guarantee that something's gonna come along and chase you and sometimes the owners love it because it's like oh he's giving my dog a free run but uh, yeah it looks like a small dog so I don't think we're gonna have too many problems but as for the feel it feels very similar to the very first X light I know they've changed the gimbals and the sticks are different Certainly changing the rates on my model has helped 
but I still feel like I'm not flying smooth. I feel like with the bigger transmitters having more stick resolution and things like that, I'm just more used to it, that's all it is. We got quite a wind today as well, so I hope the audio is coming through. to look into that RSSI value. See, I can't quite get my inverted yaw spins because I'm not used to the throw, but I'll take it. You can hear the owner of the dog now shouting. Just a small dog. <laughs> We're getting to the end of the battery, so uh, yeah. I think I'll bring it in for a landing, but that's my initial look at the X Lite Pro. I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.